First and foremost, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. It's real important. The wisdom to know the difference. I can't change white supremacy. Um, I cannot change mental illness. I cannot change black mental illness, nor can I change white mental illness. It's all mental illness. It all has a root in a bed and a foundation in mental illness. So I have to keep living one day at a time and try to enjoy the moment that I'm in. I think that is the biggest challenge for all of us is to stay in the moment, the moment that we are in. Um, happy birthday to me. And not only do I want to um, acknowledge that the fact that it is my birthday, I also want to acknowledge the sacrifice that Dr. King has made on this day um, for all of us. And I call him the king of love because his focus was love. And he saw the higher good of mankind. He saw the higher good of beings that walk the earth in a human form. And he knew that either we were going to learn how to get along as brothers or either we were going to die as fools. And I still believe that Adelich, um, it's okay for you to love your clan. And just because white people love white people doesn't give them any excuse to hate anybody else. Because black people love black people does not mean that they hate anyone else. And at some point, we have to get away from this real elementary toddler type of thinking in order to be successful as a country, as a nation, and as a people. Because right now, we're so far away from that, that it's pathetic. And, um, you know, some somebody has to really speak to it. But I have an email that I really want to share. I had to hope I, I printed it out because it was, I thought I printed it out. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I have to go to the page. Anyway, uh, on my cell phone, let's see. Okay, I want to share this uh, with you guys and hopefully y'all give um, some feedback to this. I haven't been a lot. I haven't been given permission to use the name of the person, but I have been uh, given permission to read the story. Just so if any of y'all can relate, you can leave your comments below and I would certainly appreciate it. And I'm sure the um, writer of the email would appreciate it as well. Um, mental health, dear mental health, I am becoming more aware. Um, I am becoming aware, more aware, and I am observing the mental illness that is responsible for the world's confusion. <laughs> I especially see a breeding ground <coughs> for mental illness in the African American community. And I want to start with my family's dysfunction. My brother has been in the gang since he was 14 or 15 years old. At um, 21, he was shot in the back and has been paralyzed. Wow. Um, until his death three months ago at age 37. He has left nine children without a father and has, has eight baby mothers who have taught, basically taught his children to hate him and see life from her perspective. Um, him spending the rest of his adult life in and out of jail uh, stopped him from acquiring many or any marketing skills, unfortunately. Sadly, his life was cut short along with two other 
of his fellow gang members to in a revenge type of situation that I would rather not get into. My question or my comment is at my brother's service, members of his gang was upset that we did not acknowledge his set in the obituary. A lot of my family uses substance substances and that is why my deceased brother and his friends that his friends supplied so this has literally split my family wow right down um has really split my family and has started to use and has started to be angry and fight one another I have had to go no contact for at least four or five weeks. That is insane for the fact that I put the obituary together and read it without acknowledging these people who I feel are just as responsible for my brother's death as he is. I know that this is insane, but I guess I need validation being that sometimes I second guess myself unnecessarily. What do you think about this? Okay. Dear one, dear heart, I think just like you think about it, um, this is some more black dysfunction. This is the kind of dysfunction that we have in our homes that um, make no sense that um, we got people in our family that get mad because we don't co-sign this fuck fuckery and foolery and call us snitches and call us names because we don't want to cater to the low end of ourselves. Everybody has a low end and a high end. And it just seems like black, a lot of us in the black community only want to cater to the low end of ourselves. And that I have a problem with um, because I think that's what the Sphinx represent, that the human animal, uh, what separates us is the fact that we have a head, a human head <laughs> over an animalistic body. And then that um, human head should come um, the ability to reason, um, the ability to compromise, the ability to um, have free will and not just be under the law. So when we uh, think about our bid, our attributes as people in general, and when we know that one of our family members have, um, you know, our attributes as people we we have good and we have bad right but when we start thinking about stuff like our family members can go out and hurt somebody or we can know a family member that has hurt somebody and he's on the run and we talk about white supremacy or the oppression thereof but yet we're not thinking about that our family member wouldn't hurt another black person or we're trying to help our loved one evade white supremacy when they have wreaked havoc on somebody else's family. That to me just doesn't make sense. It, it never has and it never wills. It never will. Um, justice um, is something that we should aspire to have for all of us. And for anybody in your family to make you feel that you're less than because you don't want to represent for the gang uh, members that your brother uh, participated in that activity. Well, that's what got him killed. And I, I think that you did. You made the right choice. I, mean, I think you made the right decision. I have been in that situation before and I, I did just like you did. I refused. Um, because nowadays when you go to funerals, they start to look like um, our starving need for attention. And you can see it in the ceremonies where the obituaries have turned into books and poses and um, just things that you 
it, it, it almost looks as if it's a portfolio. As if these people have nothing to live for and they get their one moment of fame and walk of fame through their death and through their funeral. I think that's horrible. I don't want that to be my shining glory moment. Uh, and for all my celebration to be um, uh, only through my death, only through um, that is the only time that I'm acknowledged. I have family members that are alive that, that, that don't respect me, that don't care about me when I'm alive, but when I'm dead, they want to do a book about me and all these exploits. I think that is just insane. And it's done all the time in the inner, in the black community, and it's disgusting, and it's heartbreaking, just like all these makeshift um, memorial trees that are in our neighborhoods. No, I don't blame you. And you got to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, you're going to go for it. You're going to fall for anything. Surely... Um, I know what it feels like to lose loved ones. I lost two. Okay? I know exactly what it feels like. And I also know what it feels like to be on uh, the other side, on both sides of crime. So, um, hold on to your guns. And I would hope that some of our uh, intelligent, wise uh, subscribers out there would also uh, chime in and let you know just how important your stance was that you took because glorifying that type of stuff just perpetuates more of it. And that's something that we don't need in our community. We do not need to perpetuate any more violence. We do not need to glorify the gang members that are running through our neighborhoods wreaking havoc on our children and on our lives. Okay? All right, so that's all I'm going to say about that right now. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe and send me a birthday shout out. I'd really appreciate it. All right. Okay, you guys, have a good day. We'll talk later in the mental house. Bye-bye.